Hello everyone, I'm Haoran Ma, now a third year PhD student at UCLA. Today, I'm going to present our paper, MemLiner, Lining Up Tracing and Application for a Farmer-Friendly Runtime. This is a joint work of UCLA and the University of Chicago. Nowadays, the data center has the problem of memory capacity bottleneck. The growing of DRAM memory capacity is slower than that of processor computation. And the memory in data centers is often underutilized, causing a big resource waste. So cloud providers are now thinking how to solve these problems. One of the most promising directions is to use far memory. Far memory systems can improve resource utilization and has better elasticity. Most far memory systems built on a cache and swap mechanism. The host server is usually equipped with very strong cores and some amount of memory. It uses local memory as a data cache, and it accesses remote memory through special high-speed network stack, such as RDMA over InfiniBand. Once a page that does not reside in local memory is accessed, a page fault is triggered, and the page is fetched from remote memory. Accessing data on remote memory is slower than accessing data in local memory. So good locality and effective prefetching are crucial to the performance of applications running in such far memory systems. Far memory is the most widely used in data centers. And in data centers, the dominant workloads such as Spark, Cassandra, or Neo4j are applications written in high-level languages such as Java, Python, or Scala. Although many far memory technique, techniques has been proposed to help reduce the remote access frequency and hide the remote access latency, almost all of those transparent techniques focus on OS-level optimizations, and they are agnostic to runtime underneath applications written in high-level languages. These applications' behaviors are quite different from native applications, mainly because of the GC mechanism inside the runtime which can ruin the performance improvement brought by existing tech far memory techniques. The runtime manages memory by doing garbage collection. The key idea of GC is simple. It performs a reachability analysis to identify a transitive closure of live objects and reclaims objects outside the closure. And to avoid extremely long GC pauses, the tracing of the heap is done concurrently with applications in most modern GC algorithms including G1, the default garbage collector in OpenJDK, and Shenandoah and ZGC, which are two widely used low-pulse garbage collectors. However, the interference from the concurrent tracing severely degrades the memory access locality and the remote memory prefetching for managed applications. When running on far memory systems, this application encounters big performance slowdown. We run Spark Kimmins with G1GC on the 25% and 13% local memory ratio. The local memory ratio here means the ratio of the local memory capacity on the host server over the total amount of available memory on both the host server and the remote side. As we can see, the slowdown is over 2.6 times and 3.4 times respectively. This kind of big slowdown comes from two big problems caused by concurrent tracing. The first problem is resource computation. Application threads and GC threads execute concurrently, and they access different data. Pages swapped in for GC's heap traversal are often not used in near future, and hence evicted by the application. And it's the same conversely. Due to evicting each other's pages, the application and the GC both suffer from severe local memory misses. So they further compete for RDMA bandwidth to do page swapping. The second problem is ineffective prefetching. GC performs graph traversal, which has barely no time and spatial locality. You can clearly see from the figure, we, when running application and the tracing in GC concurrently, as shown on the left, even if the application's memory accesses follow a simple sequential pattern. On the right side, the combined accesses from both the application and the tracing often appear random from the OS perspective. So almost all prefetchers in kernel cannot recognize clear memory access patterns and hence has to give up prefetching. Since the problems are caused by the concurrent tracing in GC, a natural question here would be, can we just disable the concurrent tracing? And the answer is no. 
concurrent tracing is needed to get the aliveness information of the whole heap. For example, for G1GC, without concurrent tracing, it cannot reclaim as many dead objects in the same amount of time and has to resort to full heap GC. Full heap GC scans and compacts the whole heap space in a stop the world period. Here, we show the total execution time and GC pause time of running Spark linear regression. You can see the average total execution time and GC pack pause time actually increased after disabling concurrent tracing. This is because the stopped world full heap GC is way too slow on far memory systems. And for other modern concurrent GCs like Shenandoah and ZGC, they rely on concurrent tracing to reclaim memory. Disabling concurrent tracing would destroy the functionality of such collectors. So it is clear now that we cannot disable concurrent tracing. Then what can we do to solve this performance problem? OK, here it comes to the key question of our paper. Are the application and the garbage collection completely unrelated? If the answer is no here, then it's possible for us to do working set alignment, which can reduce the interference between application and the GC. And after we dig into the runtime deeper, we observe two important things. First, the objects accessed by the application and the tracing in GC are just temporarily unaligned. The live objects traced by the GC are mostly accessed by the application at some point during the execution. And the objects accessed by the application must be live objects at the moment of the access, and hence they are also the target of GC. Second, although changing object access order in application threads would break the application semantics, changing that order in GC would not. Specifically, GC threads aim to trace and mark all reachable objects in the heap, while the order of tracing does not matter. Guided by these two observations, we propose MemLiner. MemLiner is a runtime technique to line up the GC and application. The key idea behind MemLiner is working set alignment. This is the current runtime, application thread access heap objects following their program execution path, while GC threads concurrently scan the heap, performing graph traversal to mark live objects. Object accessed by these two sets of threads are uncoordinated, creating two disjoint working sets and causing severe performance problems. But MemLiner carefully reorders the objects traced by the GC threads. We let GC threads follow application's access path so that the sets of objects accessed by GC and applications at the same period of time are close to each other. In this way, the resource computation can be much alleviated. There will be much reduced page faults, and the application access patterns can also be more easily to, to be recognized by the underlying prefetcher in the OS kernel. But how do we achieve this? We do this by classifying alive objects into three types based on their location and when they are accessed by the application. The first type is local objects. They are objects currently being accessed by the application, so they are in local memory. Clearly, tracing them at this moment or in the near future would not generate any page faults or interfere with the application. The second type is incoming objects. These objects are in remote memory but will be used by the application soon. Tracing them now is also desirable because although currently they are not local, they will soon be needed by the application. If GC triggers page faults when accessing them, it is like GC actually just prepaid the cost of handling these faults for the application. The third type is distant objects. These objects are in remote memory and will not be used soon. Tracing them is needed eventually, but it's undesirable now, because if they are not used by the application before their next eviction, the high cost of fault handling and swapping is entirely wasted. So we would like to delay the tracing of those objects. In a nutshell, MemLiner's central design goal is to let GC trace local objects and incoming objects right away to maximize progress, and delay tracing distant objects to avoid unnecessary page faults and interference. However, the challenge here is, how do we let GC threads identify, those, identify objects in different categories? More specifically, first, for local objects, how do we let GC threads know what objects are currently being accessed by applications? Second, what kind of objects will be accessed by applications soon and should be regarded as incoming objects? 
Third, for distant objects, how can we know if an object is in local memory or not? Next, I will show our solution to those problems, but before getting to our solution, I want to introduce barriers first, which is the basis of our technique. In many runtimes like OpenJDK, barrier is a piece of code executed by the runtime at each heap read and write in the application. For example, here we have read operations on the top and write operations on the bottom. And the runtime could insert pieces of code before and after the read and write operations to do some specific work. Memliner extends barriers in the runtime to solve the challenges in classifying objects. Now let's take a deeper look at each of them. For local objects, applications need to inform GC threads what objects are currently being accessed so that GC threads can trace these objects immediately. Memliner achieves this by instrumenting the barrier. When the application does a heap access, our instrumentation pushes the corresponding address B into a thread local producer consumer queue, which will be read by GC during tracing. A GC thread constantly checks queues and uses atomic instructions to retrieve pointers for tracing. In this way, the GC threads know what objects are currently being accessed and mark and trace them immediately. For the second challenge, what kind of objects will be accessed by applications soon and should be regarded as incoming objects? In high-level managed languages, objects are, are accessed through references. So the incoming objects are typically just a few references away from the objects that the application is currently using. We can take a look at this figure. Using the previous method, we already had those local objects shown as green nodes. Then the incoming objects represented by yellow nodes are just a few references away. We just need to let GC trace a small number of references forward from the green nodes. OK, for the challenge in identifying the last type of objects, distant objects, the GC threads need to know whether an object is local or not when it encounters an object during tracing. A naive solution here is to create a system call that allows GC to query the page table. However, this can be prohibitively uh, expensive as it requires a system call per visited object during tracing. So we need an efficient way to estimate whether an object is local or not. What we do is conceptually dividing the execution of an application into epochs. A counter is maintained by the OS kernel. When a significant number of new pages are swapped in and old pages are swapped out, it means the set of objects in local memory has changed. We increase this epoch counter by one. In the GVM, virtual addresses of objects are represented as references. The format of an object reference in Memliner is shown on the right. When the reference is accessed by application threads, the barrier would update the object reference with the new current epoch. It is like an indicator of the access recency. The GC thread in Memliner compares the timestamp in the object pointer with the current epoch ID. If these two IDs are close to each other, Memliner would assume the object is local and goes ahead. Otherwise, it delays the tracing of the object. Note that there is a delay limit to control the number of times to delay the tracing of an object so that we can avoid severely delaying GC from reclaiming dead heap space. OK, now it comes to the last part, the evaluation of our technique. To show the generality of our method, we implement Memliner in two widely used garbage collectors, G1GC and Shenandoah GC. We run Memliner on 12 different workloads under a range of different local memory ratios. The workloads include batch processing big data applications, in-memory databases, graph databases, key value store systems, and web service applications. As for the underlying swap systems, we chose fast swap and leap. Here is the speed up of Memliner compared with unmodified GVM as a baseline on the different local memory ratios on fast swap. Memliner offers better performance over the baseline GVM for all workloads. For G1 GC, Memliner achieves about 1.5 times speed up on average. For Shenandoah GC, Memliner achieves about two times speed up. To see if Memliner can improve the prefetching effectiveness, we also run Memliner on an advanced aggressive OS-level prefetcher, Leap. 
we can see that MapLiner do improve the overall performance by an average of 1.6 times on leap and reduces 58% of on-demand swappings as well as 53% of total swappings. We also measure leap's prefacing accuracy and coverage with and without MemLiner. As shown on the right side, MemLiner helps leap deliver higher prefetch accuracy and coverage. OK, in the end, actually, we mainly want to convey two points in this talk. First, modern data centers have drastically different underlying hardwares and application behaviors. We have seen the OS and kernel bypassing stacks are evolving to adapt to the, challenging, uh, to the changing assumptions. But actually, the modification of runtime should also be considered. Otherwise, it might ruin the performance improvement brought by existing techniques. Second, runtime serves as a semantic bridge between application and underlying hardware architecture. We believe that there could be many research opportunities in this field. That's all. Our code is also open sourced on GitHub. Welcome to use it. Thank you.